So, well, yeah, go. Oh, go. So, uh, <laughs> aside from like the social media, like think about like all the news that we get too. Like, do you think the news that we're getting from our phone is is, is accurate and credible? Because think about it, like we're just flipping through and it's just like they time it to where you know you're only gonna be looking at it for 15 seconds. Yeah, well that's an interesting thing that's going on right now. So when we had newspapers and magazines, people would sell subscriptions, you're actually paying for the periodical, they could sell ad space. When it comes to the internet, we're ha they're having a lot of trouble, all of these news sources are having a lot of trouble making money because people don't click on banner ads, right? Like not intentionally, you might like accidentally click and you're like, oh, poop, you know, trying to get off of it. Um, and so what they're doing now is something called native advertising or um, it's also called um, brand in con branded content or sponsored, sponsored content. content. Right. And basically, it looks exactly like an article. So you're reading this article about you know, somebody clothing the homeless, and you, you think you're getting this really good news from the New York Times or the Washington Post, a really credible uh, you know, website, a really credible uh, journalistic site. And then you know, it's, it looks, everything about it, the font, everything, the pictures, everything looks just like a normal article. But it might be an ad for Tide because there might be a line in there somewhere that says, you know, and then we had to wash all this clothes that was being donated and it was washed, you know, in Tide detergent and it came out cleaner than anything had ever come out before. And, and that might be a really um, benign example, but there's also um, really um, dangerous examples like Chevron you know, paying for ads and making everybody think that what they're doing uh, in the golf course uh, um, is um, is good, you know? And so we've got a lot of information that's coming at us uh, that's just not credible, um, and we're not checking, nobody's checking sources. We're reading one thing, and then it links us to another piece of information, we're reading that, and um, $50 billion was spent on this in the past, uh, like, three years. In, in 2015, $11 billion, that's marketers paying periodicals to put this brand new content in. So it's obviously, if they're spending that much money, it's obviously getting them a lot of money back, which means that it's a lot of mind control that's happening on our end. We're reading things and we don't realize that we're being sold. We're being sold. So basically you're spending your time thinking that you're reading news and you're actually spending your time feeding yourself camouflage commercials. Um, so something to think about. So the same question that I ask everybody too, like after you're looking at this research, what have you like found yourself being guilty of for self phone addiction? My, uh, for me, in the cell phone addiction, I feel like it's a little bit of um, like I I have spent a lot of time detached from my phone, and I always find that when I come back into using it that yeah that there were like events that I didn't know about because people don't take the time to call you anymore they just post an event on Facebook and um, and so it's like you it's not that I have a fear of missing out so much as you worry for your own relationships that like you know am I are they going to think that I didn't want to come to their birthday party or um, you know like so many people's memories and experiences are happening outside of Yourself. And so then that means that you go on. And so then I go on to try and make sure that I'm a little bit informed. And then three hours later, I've spent the only free time that I have, and I just feel brain dead. And you know, it's like you can't win, it's double edged sword. Uh, before we take questions real fast, I just had like this video I wanted to show everyone. You may have seen it probably about last year, kind of like hypocritical of me saying I saw it on my phone, but uh, <laughs> that's where I did find it. And afterwards, I don't know. If you guys have seen it, great. If those of you that haven't, I, it definitely struck a chord with all of us when I actually found it and showed everyone in the group. They're like, we need to show that. We need to show that. So, please, come on back. I have 422 friends, yet I'm lonely. I speak to all of them every day, yet none of them really know me. Some interest, some image, some promotion. When we 
all share our best bits, but leave out the emotion. We're at our most happy with an experience we share. But is it the same? No one is there. Be there for your friends, and they'll be there too. But no one will be if a group message will do. We edit and exaggerate, crave adulation. We pretend not to notice the social isolation. We put our words into order until our lives are glistening. We don't even know if anyone is listening. Being alone isn't a problem. Let me just emphasize if you read a book, paint a picture, or do some exercise, you're being productive and present, not reserved and recluse. You're being awake and attentive and putting your time to good use. So when you're in public and you start to feel alone, put your hands behind your head, step away from the phone. You don't need to stare at your menu or write your contact list. Just talk to one another. Learn to coexist. I can't stand to hear the silence of a busy commuter train where no one wants to talk through the fear of looking insane. When becoming unsocial, it no longer satisfies to engage with one another and look into someone's eyes. We're surrounded by children who since they were born have watched us living like robots and think it's the norm. It's not very likely you'll make world's greatest dad if you can't entertain a child without using an iPad. When I was a child, I'd never be home. Be out with my friends on our bikes would roam on, wear holes in my trainers and graze up my knees build our own clubhouse high up in the trees. Now the park's so quiet it gives me a chill. See no children outside and the swings hanging still. There's no skipping, no hopscotch, no church and no steeple. We're a generation of idiots, smartphones and dumb people. So look up from your phone, shut down the display. Take in your surroundings, make the most of today. Just one real connection is all it can take to show you the difference that being there can There in the moment that she gives you the look that you remember forever as when love overtook The time she first holds your hand, the first kiss your lips, the time you first disagree and still love her to bits. The time you don't have to tell hundreds of what you've just done because you want to share this moment with just this one. The time you sell your computer so you can buy a ring for the girl of your dreams who is now the real thing. The time you want to start a family and the moment when you first hold your little girl get to fall in love again. She keeps you up at night and all you want is rest. And the time you wipe away the tears as your baby flees the nest. And the time you made a girl returns, a boy for you to hold. And the time he calls you granddad and makes you feel real old. The time you take all you've made just by giving life attention. And how you're glad you didn't waste it by looking down at some invention. The time you hold your wife's hand, sit down beside her bed. You tell her that you love her. Whispers to you quietly as a heart is a final beat that she's lucky she got stopped by that lost boy in the street. But none of these times ever happened. You've never had any of this. When you're too busy looking down, you don't see the chances you miss.